there and welcome to video number six of my March writing masterclasses. My name's Maria Franklin and it's wonderful to have you here uh, for today's um, video which is going to deal with show don't tell. So this is the sixth uh, video that I'm uh, recording throughout March of 2021 to support you with your writing and just talk a little bit about the, the individual skills that are necessary to uh, uh, to be uh, an engaging writer. Um, so it's worth me mentioning as well that if you go to my website which is uh, mariafranklin.co.uk all these videos are available as downloadable help sheets as well. Um, so if you just go to the downloads for writers section on my uh, website. Right okay so show sure, don't tell probably uh, one of the golden rules that needs to be adhered to by us writers, allowing the reader to experience a story for themselves through action and words, uh, thoughts, senses, feelings, rather, rather than us as writers giving them too much summary and uh, description. So it's a bit of a balancing act really. It enables the reader to really be in the, the moment whilst they're, they're reading. They have the opportunity to interpret details for themselves within the text and it makes reading a much more active process for them where they're actually having to do a little bit of work and not be spoon fed every little bit of detail about what's going on. So when a writer does this well, the reader's really in the moment. They're feeling and they're experiencing events and emotion alongside the characters that we create for them. So as writers, we have five main tools that we can use to show rather than tell. Obviously, telling has its place within the story, but like I say, it's a bit of a, a balancing act. So we can use character action to show instead of tell. So let me read you a, just a, a line. Continuing along the lane, her pace quickened with each step. She kept looking behind, hearing her heartbeat thudding in her ears. So here the emotion of fear is being conveyed through how this character is walking. It's not been necessary to say she was scared. I'm showing it through how she's walking, so through you, the use of her character action. And I'll come back to these in a, in a few moments. So the other tool I've got as a writer is to use sensory language. Um, so taking the uh, reader into the senses to convey something. Um, the smell took her right back. It was the aftershave he'd worn when they'd been dating. So in this instance, just smelling something conveys nostalgia immediately. So it's not been necessary to say within the text, she missed him, for example. So smells are really evocative uh, sense to use in your writing, but obviously you've got all the five senses available to you. Using dialogue, so this builds on, on the last video. Thomas Clifford, mum, stood at the door with her hands on her hips. Get in here this instant. We don't need to be told that mum's angry, so we can infer that as the reader. We can use description. He cradled the guitar in his arms like a lover. So a bit of a simile going on there. He cradled the guitar in his arms like a lover. Together they had created history. So we don't need to be told as readers that the character loves his guitar and is proud of something that he's just done. We know from that, that bit of description there, we've been shown rather than told. We can also use internal thought to show something to the reader. And this is really powerful stuff. It's fine, honestly. Dan folded his arms. You'll get what's coming to you. So you'll get what's coming to you isn't in speech marks, it's been thought by Dan. So it's at odds with what he's saying, which, which uh, creates the power. We know he's planning something and things are not fine, but we are shown this rather than told. So I'm going to give you some exercises to do now to help you to show rather than tell. Um, and what, what I'd like you to do is write a scene for each one or pick the one that stands out to you the most depending on how much time you've got. 
So first one, character action. And again, if you've followed all the videos right the way through, uh, it might be that you can use characters that you've already created. Have a character taking a walk and showing how he and showing through how he or she is walking, how they are feeling. So you've got all sorts of um, uh, verbs you could use, like stamped and crept here. So have them taking a walk and showing how they're feeling through how they are walking. Uh, the next task is to use uh, sensory language. So have your character hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting or touching. Something that makes them recall something from the past. And what effect does it have on them? It's actually second option. Third dialogue, again extending on the last video. Engage one character in a conversation with another character. Show their mood through what is being said. Next, description. Describe a possession that might belong to one of your characters to portray something of their personality. Show how they feel about it. And lastly, internal, internal thought. So through your character's thinking, give detail of something that they're planning and their emotion about it. So the essence of this show, don't tell process is not to give your reader every little bit of information, but rather than to give them the space to infer what's going on and interpret the information for themselves. Sometimes what we don't say to our readers is as powerful as, as what we do say. So I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Show Don't Tell and you will use it to create a more active experience for your readers. Um, I will see you to, uh, in, in two days time for our next uh, video. Um, so this is uh, number six uh, and the next one's going to be all about planning to write and some strategies you can use um, in your writing. So I will see you then. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.